I got two, two to go. Okay. Your tape nine was, uh, I tried to use the entire length of the tape on the canon surface, and it saturated the tape. Okay, go ahead and uh, fold and stow, and then uh, no need to take a picture of that again, but you do need to put your lens cap back uh, on, turn okay. the flash off if it happens to be on. Photo TV guys are always watching. I know. Yeah, I, who told them the EVA was today? I thought that's why we were going to tell them it was tomorrow. <laughs> well, the good news for you, bad news for us, is we lose KU in about 10 minutes uh, for quite a while. Whitson uh, working on another cover on the uh, Solar Alpha rotary joint as we are approaching the point uh, where the crew would begin uh, work to remove trundle bearing assembly number five. That would be under cover 20. That was the first cover removed today where uh, some of the most significant contamination and debris was noted. and pictures uh, would be in order and then we'll do sample. I would actually say this one's not really any worse than the last one I looked at, which makes it one of the best uh, debris collectors. The uh, TBA is 1036. Uh, I would say intermediate debris amounts, not the least amount, but not the most that we've seen. Interestingly, I've got more... Uh, I have the skirt in the jungle, and then I think the rest of that is called the tang. Uh, up near where the electrical connector is, I've got more debris on that section this time, right around a connector in particular. Again, the little bolts that hold it in. The surface, headed surface, looks exactly like we've seen it everywhere else. Uh, inner and outer datum have light dusting again, uh, no no real difference. Full teeth on both rings look great. Uh, you know, little bits of debris here and there, but nothing major. Picking up, and again, the most debris is the whiskers on the TDA. Okay, uh, those are good words, Peggy. Let's take some pictures with the TBA in the first shot. Alpha 1, clockwise 2, you know that? Yep, and I'm on it. Oops. Today's spacewalk, as uh, she completed her visual uh, description of the condition under cover 10, trundle bearing assembly number 11. Again, uh, this cover to be removed by the crew 
uh, before the uh, so-called bingo mark, where the crew would then be pressing on to remove Trundle Bearing Assembly Number 5, which is under cover 20. Dantani, meanwhile, is uh, replacing uh, cover number 13. Uh, he has completed uh, sample collection and descriptions uh, of the mechanisms underneath that particular cover on the starboard solar alpha rotary joint. I have external camera battery low light on. External? Oh, the low light battery? Battery is on. Did I just switch to internal now? Oh. Yes, uh, switch to internal. of your choosing on the outboard uh, Actually, the lighting actually inside is good right now. Let me, let me just take it in there for a couple shots. Okay, that'd be great. Okay, six green lights. Six green lights uh, for Cholak on cover 13. Complete. Copy. Thank you, Dan. And uh, clean up your tethers, and I'd like you to translate uh, Zenith back over to uh, where Peggy is and assist as necessary, and then we're going to put you both on Trundle Bearing 5. Okay. But uh, without touching it, I wouldn't know whether that would brush off or if it's... Uh, yeah, it might be the same very top that we're collecting on our gloves. Right. But it looks uniform around the 60 degrees or 80 degrees of uh, bearing that we can see. There's no particularly worse part than others. The, uh, the one on datum A has kind of two colors to it. Oh, yeah, let me see if I can catch that. It's kind of a gold, it's a gold surface that is similar in, in color to the gold on the edge of the bearing. And then that's about two-thirds of, of it. And uh, the outer third has a, is more silverish. Almost looks like that by design, but because it looks such, like such a clean line between the gold and the silver. And then the inner race, or the inner bearing, uh, looks very clean. It looks like it, it has uh, circumferential marks on it, but I would almost say that's probably from the initial machining. Um, it's not a mirror finish, but it's a rather brushed bit finish. Um, but I don't know. I, so it's hard for me, hard for me to say if that was, if that uh, is intentional or not. Yeah. Can you give me a view of that first thing? Okay. Just like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those are uh, excellent words, Dan. Uh, you know, the bearings do have uh, the rollers have gold on them, a, a very thin layer. Uh, do you see any evidence of uh, that gold remaining on any of the rollers other than Data May roller? No, I would say no. Do you, do you agree? Yeah, it's on the on the roller part of the surface, on the canted surface that lead up to the bearing, the roller. Oh, right. All right. of them have gold on them. Right. So there is gold finish on the part that doesn't bear on any surface. Yeah. Surface. But uh, the the datum A roller. Uh, again, the. Uh, it's two toned, right? Gold on the. Uh, I'm trying to think of the. It would be two thirds of the surface of the roller that is Upper for this outer. inboard. So it goes like this, right? Yeah, for this inboard are is still relatively gold with some wear. But there's a pretty distinct line, and about the outboard third of that roller is a different silvery color. Yes. Okay. Now uh, look on the, the outer canted bearing, Dan. Uh, what? I was just trying to compare the two outer and inner surfaces on the edge here. Okay, they, they look the same. I was just, yeah. I thought they looked different. Oh, I see. You, you know, this surface and this surface. They look the same. 